Give the gift of Rev Voice this Christmas. Rejoice with Rev Voice when you sign up and enter to win 12 days of giveaways, including a 2015 Jeep Wrangler from Bahamas Bus and Truck. New details emerge about two brothers shot following their siblings' funeral. A New Zealand VAT expert weighs in on the Bahamas' VAT campaign. Another delay in the John Boswick trial, plus the top 10 unanswered questions of 2014. We've got those stories and a whole lot more tonight. I'm Vonnie Toot and NB12 starts now. Topping news tonight, police have identified two teens shot shortly after their brother's funeral on Saturday. As they prepare to bury another loved one, grieving family members were at Princess Margaret Hospital today to visit the 14-year-old victim who is fighting for his life. Jasmine Brown has a story. In a matter of weeks, two brothers have been murdered and another one critically injured, leaving a family to pick up the pieces and police scrambling to find out who committed those crimes. Those teenage brothers were involved in a double shooting on Saturday. The siblings had just left the funeral of their older brother, Lauren Roll, who was shot dead last month. We reached out to the victim's mother, Chantelle Roll, today. Though she declined an on-camera interview, Roll says she and her family are living in fear, telling NB12 they believe someone may be out to finish what they started after someone called the house on Sunday inquiring. Police said on Saturday that assailants shot up the vehicle the teens were in as it sat stationary at a traffic light on Soldier Road around 1.30 p.m. According to reports, two men exited the Honda, pulled black masks over their faces and began shooting. The brothers were both shot multiple times. The 18-year-old attempted to drive to hospital. Chief Superintendent Paul Rowe said police assisted them en route to hospital. However, Jaquan was pronounced dead on arrival. 18-year-old driver, he was shot multiple times about the body and also the, his younger brother, age 14, he was shot multiple times and they sped off en route to the Princess Margaret Hospital where they were intercepted by a police vehicle that assisted them to PMH where they were examined. Distraught family members gathered at PMH on Saturday overcome with emotion. Their mother also refuted reports that Jaquan had recently been released from prison, as reported by police. She says while her son was not perfect, he was released from prison two years ago. The family and police are asking anyone with information on the murders to contact police at 911-919 or 502-9991. Reporting for NB12, I'm Jasmine Brown. From the courts, the ammunition possession trial of former Free National Movement Senator John Boswick Jr. has been delayed yet again. The trial was expected to begin this morning, but was pushed back to April 7th due to a lack of witnesses. This is the second delay. In September, Magistrate Andrew Forbes granted the adjournment at the request of Deputy Director of Public Prosecutions Franklin Williams, who said the prosecution was not ready to proceed. Prosecutors allege the 42-year-old George Street resident had 10 rounds of .22 ammunition in his possession. A security screener at Grand Bahama International Airport allegedly discovered the items in Bostwick's bag as he prepared to travel to New Providence on May 17th. Bostwick is on $9,000 bail. Two weeks before the implementation of value-added tax, a New Zealand-based VAT expert says the Bahamas has, for the most part, done what is needed to prepare for the tax policy shift and educate the public. However, he knows that there are still a few kinks that need to be ironed out before January 1st. Kyle Walking tells us more. 
The government's consultant on VAT from New Zealand, Don Brash, said from what he's seen so far, the Bahamas is on track for a smooth implementation of value-added tax come January 1st. Brash said from what he's seen so far, it appears as though the government took advantage of most, if not all, of the advice he gave back in April. With the implementation of value-added tax just two weeks away, Don Brash, the government's VAT consultant from New Zealand, believes the government's rollout is looking pretty good. VAT will be introduced on January 1st at a rate of 7.5 percent. Brash told NB12 that for the most part, the country is in a much better position in terms of being prepared for the new tax scheme. However, he did state that there is still a bit more important work to be done. They have to actually formally promulgate the so-called rules. The act has been passed, the regulations have been issued, uh, internal policies have been developed, guidance notes have been put out for many specific industries, but the rules have to be formally promulgated. I've seen a draft of those rules, so it's not, not very far away, uh, and they'll be coming out, I gather, quite shortly. During Brash's last visit to the Bahamas in April, he recommended that if the government reduced the percentage of VAT from 15 percent, that there be little to no exemptions. He said the government took his advice on that as well as the establishment of an educational task force, which he said appears to have been doing a good job. He did, however, state that there are some aspects of the educational campaign that could use a bit more focus. Well, I think completing the registration process is obviously very important. I think the second thing is that businesses themselves need to understand how to go about filing their returns. Large businesses will start doing that in February, smaller businesses will start doing it in April. And of course on the public side, the public needs to understand how VAT will work. Someone told me that in, in the Bahamas at the moment the only three things which are, sub, which are widely discussed are immigration, crime and VAT. So clearly. VAT is, is uppermost to many minds and, and people are conscious of the fact that as of January 1, some prices will go up. Now just how the prices of certain items will go up, he expects some to go down as well as a result of customs and duty taxes being decreased on certain items. But what about who will head the VAT department? State Minister for Finance Michael Alkitas has informed our news team that Financial Secretary John Roll is now the acting VAT controller. Brash says one thing the government must ensure with this new tax scheme is that there is transparency. It is important, I think, for the public generally to understand why this tax is needed. And therefore, I, I would certainly encourage the government to be as open as they can be about the fiscal position. How big is the fiscal deficit? How big is the fiscal debt, the government debt? How fast is it growing? And what are the ways of reducing or improving that situation? And, and certainly, I think, and the acceptance of a tax is obviously helped if people understand why it's being put in place. Brash said when he first visited in April, there were many within the private sector who preferred payroll tax instead of VAT. However, now he said it appears businesses understand why the government is going with VAT. The people I've spoken to this time accept that a VAT tax is the least bad tax. No one wants to pay more tax. But the general feeling is that a VAT tax is, is the least bad option for the government. So I think that's been a major improvement in the un public understanding of why a VAT is required. The consultant leaves this week but said he will be back in January to see how the new tax is going. Reporting for NB12, I'm Kyle Joaquin. In 2014, we got more silence than answers on some key issues of national importance. Now, as the curtain falls on another year, NB12 takes a look back at the top 10 issues that have faded from the headlines, but government has failed to provide answers on. Remember this. Four badly decomposed bodies were discovered on Anguilla Key in the Kisal Bank. And it appears those bodies were badly burned. On April 4th, police discovered the bodies of three men and one woman. They had been covered with tires, then set on fire. Authorities never classified their deaths, which would have pushed this year's murder count to 120. And who could forget the Cuban abuse probe, which dominated news headlines. Five Defense Force Marines were charged with the alleged abuse of Cuban detainees, but the hearings have long been on hold. It's another big issue that faded from headlines with many questions but few answers. The same goes for the new BTC deal. The Prime Minister announced on live TV that CWC agreed to transfer roughly 2% of BTC shares back to government. Months later, the deal has yet to be tabled. Another unanswered question. Then there's the Central Police Station wedding of Kendrick Tinker, a day after his arrest for drug possession. Let's do the math. Three police officers placed on leave, two face disciplinary charges, one jailhouse wedding. 
Answers, zero. And who could forget the BEC chairman with the big BEC bill? The Miller family paid $100,000 cash on a $239,000 BEC bill, despite a policy which prohibits cashiers from collecting more than $10,000. The PM reportedly ordered a ministerial report on the cash payment. What was the outcome? We still don't know. Another issue that is unlikely to be resolved before year's end is Dr. Andre Rollins' fate. The Fort Charlotte MP appeared before the PLP's disciplinary committee following his scathing attack on Prime Minister Christie. The matter has been referred to a committee of four persons who will make their recommendation. Three months and several meetings later, his fate remains a mystery. So does the outcome of the Bank of the Bahamas leak probe. In May, police showed up at then FNM Chairman Darren Cash's home and seized several items. Now we are hearing that they took his laptop as well as a cell phone. Cash's property was eventually returned, but seven months later, BOB officials have gone silent on the matter. The public is also awaiting answers on a public hospital's authority audit, which revealed $10 million in missing pharmaceutical supplies. There are a number of audits that have been performed, but no comments at this time. Are you aware of this audit that was reported on? Are you aware of that? Yes, I'm aware of it. Um, did you read it? Yes, I've read it. Were you shocked by anything that was in it? No comment. No comment at this point in time. When do you plan to comment on it? Very soon. Very soon. Very soon never came. Neither did answers on allegations of the National Security Agency spying on Bahamian's cell phone conversations. The facts must be determined. Otherwise, the behavior described would be clearly illegal and on the face of it, an abuse of powers. To our knowledge, the U.S. has yet to provide answers. But perhaps the top issue that officials have failed to address this year is a letter of intent scandal involving Renward Wells. Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Works, Renward Wells, was fired. The Prime Minister promised to address Wells' unauthorized signing of that LOI in Parliament. I had said to Renward Wells, I'm going to let you speak to the nation. The, the leader of the opposition has asked for a committee um, in the House of Assemblies on the agenda. And before we break, I'm going to have you speak to that and I'll speak to it. We're still waiting.